The thoracic cage is conical in shape and it's a little bit flattened anteroposteriorly. The thoracic cage is formed by the 12 pairs of ribs, usually 12 pairs of ribs. Sometimes there is an extra rib or a missing rib. And by the costal cartilages, these are the costal cartilages. The thoracic cage is also formed by the sternum. Here is the sternum, which has three parts, the manubrium, the body, and the xiphoid process. And the thoracic cage is also formed by the 12 thoracic vertebrae. The sternum is a midline bone and is formed in three pieces, the manubrium, the body, and the xiphoid process. So it, is, it looks like a dagger, and the manubrium is like the handle of the dagger. And the manubrium of the sternum articulates with the body of the sternum at a joint. And this joint is a secondary cartilaginous uh, joint. It's called the manubrio sternal joint. This joint is also referred to as the sternal angle or the angle of Lewis. Sternal angle because of the angulation, a minor angulation that is seen in profile in between the manubrium of the sternum and the body of the sternum. It's a very small angle that you can only see in profile between the manubrium and the body of the sternum. And because of that, the manubrio sternal joint is a little bit prominent and since it is subcutaneous, so it can be easily felt even in obese people. And that's why it's a very important surface anatomical landmark. Uh, just lateral to it, you can feel the second costal cartilage and then from that you can count the ribs and the intercostal spaces. So if this is the second rib, you can go down. Uh, below it is the second intercostal space, then the third rib and third intercostal space, and so on. Usually we use this landmark for counting the ribs. We don't use the first rib because, as you can see here, that the first rib is concealed by the clavicle and uh, it cannot be uh, felt. So uh, this uh, sternal angle is better used for um, this purpose. The manubrium of the sternum has a notch here, and this is called the jugular notch. And the jugular notch is a very uh, important surface anatomical landmark. Behind it, you can feel the trachea. Usually the trachea is in the midline. So if there is any deviation of the trachea, it can be felt here uh, at the jugular notch. The manubrium of the sternum also articulates with the a medial end of the clavicle at the sternoclavicular joint. This is a synovial joint. And as you can see here that it also articulates with the first costal cartilage by a joint, which is a primary cartilaginous joint. And of course, the manubrium, as I said, it articulates with the body of the sternum by a secondary cartilaginous joint, manubrio-sternal joint. So you can see that within uh, this uh, small area that there are many types of joint all around. A synovial joint, a primary cartilaginous joint, and a secondary cartilaginous joint. Uh, this is the body of the sternum. It also articulates with the costal cartilages. Be careful that the sternum does not articulate with ribs. It articulates with the costal cartilages and not the ribs themselves. And then this is the xiphoid process. The xiphoid process is usually tapered, but keep in mind that the xiphoid process uh, has different uh, shapes. Um, so it is not always uh, tapered and it is um, mostly cartilaginous until late in life, which will uh, then it will become um, bony and the uh, uh, joint between it and the body of the sternum, between the xiphoid and the body of the sternum is a primary cartilaginous joint. This is to show you a feature of the xiphoid process. Note that the xiphoid process here is bifid. So the xiphoid process has different shapes and it's not always tapered. It's sometimes bifid uh, as such. So keep it in mind, uh, you might uh, come across one of these bifid uh, xiphoid processes in a chest X-ray. The joints between the costal cartilages and the sternum itself, uh, these are we call them chondrosternal joints, chondro referring to the costal cartilage. Uh, so chondrosternal joints, these joints are uh, synovial uh, joints, and this indicates that uh, they allow uh, a reasonable degree of mobility, which takes place during movements of the ribs 
during um, respiration. Sometimes the pieces of the uh, sternum, they fuse together and become one piece, and this is called um, cyanostosis. This is to show you a variable feature of the sternum. Here, this is a piece that contains the sternum, uh, coastal uh, cartilages, and we are looking at the sternum from behind. You can see here that in the body of the sternum, there is this foramen. This is called the sternal foramen. It's a variable feature, has no clinical importance, but you should keep in mind that it sometimes might be present and might cast a shadow in the x-ray. The sternal foramen is formed because of incomplete ossification of the pieces of the sternum. The body of the sternum ossifies uh, in the form of uh, four pieces which are called sternibri and sometimes there is an incomplete ossification of one of these sternibri that results in the formation of this foramen.